hello hello beautiful family and welcome into my channel the bird gazelle my name is reem i don't know what this reading is going to be about i had the worst sleep ever tossing and turning and i was in and out of a dimension i'm going to share with you guys my dream on that in just a moment um but when i w woke up this morning it was just like instant flood of tears of emotions of healing I do my best to be transparent on this channel. I'm not sad, I'm not depressed. It's just a lot of healing is, is taking place right now. And I guess a little bit of sadness, you know, I'll be real, I'll be honest with you guys. There is sadness that is coming through. I think it's only natural as we heal and as we feel our pain and our traumas and our wounds that are um, surfacing for us to look at, to heal, to close and to release them. Um, I'm integrating my inner child. I have a lot of traumas from my childhood. I have a lot of wounds that have, I call them my primitive wounds that I can remember in this lifetime. Um, but they feel primitive. They feel like they've been, um, part of me for many lives. Um, so I'm healing these primitive, like original wounds that I've had, um, I'm also integrating my light <laughs> with my darkness. Um, my darkness is the spine that holds me up is, um, the best way that I can describe my darkness right now. It is the spine that holds me up. Um, <laughs> I just heard it is my maker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going through a lot of things right now and I'm doing my best to not project or be biased or, you know, like I feel like I do a pretty good job about that. But as you know, I'm going through a very emotional time that is a solar eclipse. I didn't expect to do a reading today. To be honest with you, I just wanted to hide in the hermit's cave. <laughs> um, but I had this dream and I had a feeling you know, just get into a reading, get into a reading, just flow, just flow in the energy, deliver the message. And I'm just like, what message am I delivering? I feel um, this swaying. Um, I feel this very personally. And maybe some of you guys may also feel this, but I feel like I'm swaying between knowing and not knowing. I feel like I'm a pendulum and I sway to the known and I can see like sacred glimpses of who I am. I could see sacred glimpses of the truth, the picture, the path, who I am, who I want to be, what I'm creating. And then I swing back into this unknown space where I'm just like, wait a minute, I just saw it. And then like, I'm all the way being tugged back into the unknown. So I feel like I'm a pendulum right now swinging between these two dimensions of seen and unseen. And I don't know what this means particularly. I don't know if this is a message for today or if we're just here to accept that this is just where we are right now. Um, maybe we're in a liminal phase. Maybe we're trying to transition. I don't know. Um, but it feels like this pendulum happens like quite quickly. Um, like I can't seem to stay in this known truth for a long period of time. It feels like once I start to grasp something, I grasp a knowing, I grasp a truth and it's of a higher frequency, it's of a higher dimension. I seem to fall back to the unknown anyway. So um, that is also happening. And then there's the emotional primitive wounds that are being healed and the inner child that is being integrated and the light and the dark that are harmoniously being integrated as well within me. So there's a lot going on that I feel like I'm not the only one going through it too. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, but I'll share with you my dream. So I was in this space. I don't know where it was, but it's, it looked as if it was a very old, um, bath, like, um, like a, I, I, I went to one of these in Turkey, actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, when I was in Istanbul, it was a bath and it was like, um, just for women 
anyway, so I, I'm in one of those spaces and like all these women are bathing and I'm bathing and I'm preparing for a ceremony. And I instantly, like instinctually knew that this was a marriage ceremony. And obviously, you know, the sun and the moon, this is their marriage ceremony that they're having right today with the solar eclipse. Um, so I was like, okay, this is a marriage so- ceremony in the solar eclipse, you know? didn't really think much of it I didn't want to come here and do a reading um if that's what it was you know like okay it's just symbolism um but then this like matriarch appeared and she was telling me to get dressed so I'm I'm back um because I was like going between like pictures like I kept returning to this one particular dream so I'm back and this matriarch appeared and so I'm like, okay, I'm like shuffling around trying to find my dress, my wedding dress, and I can't find it. I'm like, I didn't bring one or I must have forgotten. I don't know where it is. I don't have a dress to wear to this ceremony. And then all of a sudden this charade of like the most beautiful women that I've ever seen and the most beautiful of veils and gowns like very old vintage lace sheer material perfect like feeling of silk um and veils that I was just like oh my god like what what is this and um that's why I'm wearing white today and why there's like I have you know my two white candles I'm actually waiting for my black candle um so I feel like it's actually taking longer than usual, so I feel like there's a reason why my black handle is taking longer than usual, um, because there's something about this light that not only am I integrating, again, as I mentioned, but this dream that I had of, like, these white wedding gowns, and there was one that I wanted. Um, she wore it. I can literally draw it out. I saw it so clearly, and I said, I want that one. That's my dress. And then I woke up. And then I woke up. Um, I felt like I had it at the end of the dream. I felt like I was wearing it. But I don't know what this means. I have no idea what this is. I don't know what dimension I was in. Look on the split. <laughs> I'm in the fairy deck. It's number nine. It's the fairy guide. It's actually, this is a card in the fairy deck. So that's interesting. It was on the split. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just going to flow. I don't know if this is a solar eclipse energy. I don't know if this is the energy for the next six months. I don't know if this is a message that just needs to be delivered to those who are resonating with this. And then we'll go back to our regular program. I don't know. I have no idea. (laughs) So um yeah oh okay so just two flew at me as i was shuffling um three i'm not gonna take them am i gonna take them i don't know well you have your himself number 17 You have the piper playing the song, and then you have the friends, 46. I just heard the friend of himself. Sorry, that's way too many. Should I just take these? I'm going to go, there we go, there's one that came out. Number four, this is He of the Fiery Sword. So there's a lot of like he himself masculine energy that's here. Okay, I'm going to read himself first. I'm not familiar with fairy energy. I don't always work with the fairies. Okay, so himself talks about natural law, life force, magic, and shamanic power. Known as himself, this seed, 
I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm saying that as seed is guardian of both the hunter and the hunted and finds no conflict in that because he understands the, the many necessary balance of nature. Um, Andy was actually talking about the hunter and like hunting the light. The living bond between all life himself is the breath that moves, the atom that dances, and his magic is in pure being, living, loving. Journeyman and the master maker have the magic of doing, of the creation of things. The bright mother has the magic of manifesting and nurturing, but himself, he has the magic of procreation of dancing the spark of life into being. His presence brings magic and life into a world where it is shaped and given form by Earth Mother. He dances at the Bright Mother as the Bright Mother gives us birth, powering us into the world. He is the Great Father. Okay, what are we doing here? So I saw a matriarch in my dream. So that was the bright mother. At the other end of our lives, he is the one who dances the great dance of life and death. And it is himself who, when the Piper card. You hear the Piper. Plays his lonely call. On the wave swept shore at year's end. Dances open the gate between the worlds so that the dead may pass beyond. It is also he who is willing to sacrifice himself when that is necessary for the sake of those whom he protects. In between those two extremes, his wild yang energy is channeled through humans to benefit tribe and family. My left ear is ringing. His family is all of us, human and animal. Shamans draw upon his power and the best healers channel a balance between his power and the bright mother's nurturing energy. Even as our hearts beat within us, we learn to mediate the life force through joyful being and action. Expressing this power through healing and love and trust, we become more like himself. So there's a gate here that's being opened between the worlds so that the dead may pass beyond. That's the song that's opening the world so that the dead may pass beyond. When himself appears in a card spread, he not only indicates that a great amount of energy is present in the reading, but he also strongly energizes the fairy cards around him. Everything he touches becomes more of whatever it is, more alive, more vigorous, more powerful, more awesome, or more awful. This card in a reading can indicate, can indicate great vitality victory or confidence triumph and power there is leadership and ability to command steadfastness and integrity wild power held and channeled for the good of all by will himself speaks of protection either of the querent or of someone the querent owes protection to like a child or an elder. Acceptance of paternal responsibility is important as are deep and committed relationships. He is the preserver of the natural world and its balances. Shamanic power may be indicated here as well as a potential for powerful spiritual healing. This card may also speak of erotic energy, passion, and potent creativity. I feel like the dead may pass beyond. I'm seeing the death card. It's this phoenix-like energy 
because we're passing through the gates between the worlds and I was feeling like I'm in a pendulum like I'm the pendulum and and I'm swinging between the known and the unknown worlds the seen and the unseen worlds and the dead may pass through these two dimensions meaning like we are passing through we are between these two dimensions that's where we are um Give me a moment. It's not like we're dead. <laughs> like, it's not saying that. It's like, um, I'm seeing like the death card with the phoenix. Like, it's this resurrection energy where we are feeling more alive, more vigorous, more powerful. So we're passing through between the worlds the seen and the unseen but what what's passing through what's passing through because I keep seeing this pendulum and like I keep seeing a really quickening like it's quick it's getting faster and faster It's like, um, so that the dead may pass through. It's our, it's the spirits of our, our friends. It's, um, the spirits of ourselves, like the, our past selves, our friends, like the friends, meaning like, because this card to me is representing who we were, who we were in our past, who we were in our past lives, who we used to be, um, our identities. Like, you know, the girl that I used to be when I was sitting on the couch and I was grieving my old self, she is passing through this gate so that the dead may pass through so that it's this resurrection energy of feeling more alive, a feeling more vigorous, feeling more powerful. That is this heat of fiery sword because now we're holding our power. So it's like we're taking our friends through this gate, taking our identities, taking our past selves, taking our inner child and like we're passing them through this gate. Um, We're closing a lot of chapters of who we are right now. We are closing the chapter of our our inner child. That book is closing. Like for my little girl, my inner child, I'm closing a chapter for her right now. I'm closing a chapter also for the girl who started the channel back in 2017. I'm closing that chapter for her. So it's like we're leading our friends, our ourselves, our past selves, and we're closing the chapters for them. Because now we have the fiery sword of our power, of our truth, of who we are. To be more alive, to be more vigorous, to me, to be more, to be more, to be more. Okay, I'm going to go to the four, um, heat of the fiery sword. Okay, so this is justice, protection, spiritual will, spiritual will, the active principle. When the song comes, so there's, okay, so the song comes again and you have here the piper. So the piper is this song, is this frequency, is this energy that is opening these two worlds. So a lot of you may also be feeling like you're in this pendulum. But the piper is the song. So to me, this is the universe, the song, the tunes of the frequencies of the universe that we're connecting ourselves to so when the song comes into any of the manifest worlds 
this world or fairy or another, it first encou- encounters two principles, some, sometimes called yin and yang or masculine or feminine. So interesting. Okay. Or great god and great goddess. He, the fiery sword, is the primary manifestation of the yang principle, action, will, movement, force, fire. We see him in many ways, each one an aspect of his total being. All of the great gods and protectors are aspects of his power. The fiery sword is the archetype of all magical and mundane. Sword and written upon the blade are the words, draw me not without cause, nor return me without honor. A member of the oracle group notes his fiery sword illuminates truth and dispels not truths. We can call upon the master of the fiery sword when we have difficulties, thing, when we have difficult things to do, when we need to take action that is going to require much of us, both in will and in compassion. Another of the oracle group reminds us he will do what needs to be done with love. When looking at this card, my neighbors saw it not as a sword, but as a feather of light. Oh, that's so pretty. He saw it as a symbol of the ability to fly, to rise above things. And look at that. See, your your younger self, your inner child, your past selves, your identities. You're closing out their chapters because you have given them the ability to fly, to rise above the experiences and the traumas and the wounds that have attached to them. They're rising above that. I'm t- these cards literally flew at me as I was shuffling. That's wild. An oracle group member saw it as someone reaching up, ascending, surrounded by multiple reflections and filled with light and power. To understand this card more fully, please read the comments on She of the Grouch card 5. They are the two halves of the same whole sun and the moon the presence of the fiery swords master in a reading can indicate that there is okay also they are the two halves of the same whole light dark and you also have the unseen and the seen The presence of the fiery sword's master in a reading can indicate that there is or there is a need for a clear and focused will and a determination to carry through on decisions. And isn't that what the pendulum is? The pendulum is like decisions, right? Even if much effort is required... Or he can tell us that such will and strength is present in regard to the issues under consideration. We need to consider how he is expressing his will and strength and how that expression may be enhanced or improved. It is the singer's energy that enables us to burst the bonds of an outgrown way of being and move on to the next level. He indicates that this is a time to take action based on clear spiritual will. His presence indicates great strength and great potential for good. It also reminds us that if we call upon him, we will receive assistance. The presence of this card in a reading radiates strength and willpower to the cards around it. So, you know what's really wild? Remember the king that I saw and I still haven't channeled the king energy? I'm actually going to get that right now. We're going to talk about the kings. Hold on. (laughs) Sorry. One second. Okay, so on March 9th, 2024, I channeled a vision of a king with tape over his mouth. This masculine needs help finding his voice. Fears of being seen only in the light of his potential and not the light of himself. And then I heard, I'm making my way to my potential. Fears of not being good enough for the world, community, love, family, and career. 
and then I got the number 101001 in that sequence. And then I said experience of oppression and corruption through trauma with family, father wound, and or misusing power. Becoming benevolent, divine leader, service, and nobility. And then I heard Lion King connected to a new lion, which is really a new sun. And I channeled a new sun many years ago. Many years ago. So that's this king. But this is a half of us. This is us. The masculine and feminine. So they said to understand this card better. So really, like to understand this half of ourselves better, we need to understand the other half too. And I believe this is who I saw in my dream. She. She. Um, let me actually find her. Because she was like the matriarch and I was getting ready for the marriage. <laughs> and I didn't have a wedding gown. <laughs> well, that's pretty wild. Um, okay. Let me find her so I can hold her up. Sorry. While reading her card to you guys. There she is. That looks like a deer. Okay, interesting. So here's both of them. The receptive principle nurturing and fertility. This is a great goddess, the many named mother of all, and all goddesses are attributes or aspects of her. Her cup, the croc, I don't know how to pronounce that, overflows with bounty for all. She is the yin energy of the universe, nurturing compassion, compassionate and wise. She gives form and brings into manifestation the will and the and life force of he of the fiery sword. His is the intention, the action, and hers is the manifest reality. In a sense, she is the croc holding all the worlds within her being. One oracle group member saw the saw her as a gro a great bowl like a scrying tool for seeing past, present, or future, future potential, but filled with energy instead of water. Within it, he saw a tower with the moon above it, a farmhouse, and many other bits and pieces of our world. He felt that if you dropped something in the water, these things would scatter out to become reality, archetypes manifesting everywhere, he said. She is the woman who dreams, and her dreams are the worlds and all that is in them. Um, that's so pretty. She is the woman who dreams, and her dreams are the worlds, and all that is in them. Looking at this card, another oracle group member notes, What I see here is the energy of being held lovingly in the palm of the hand of the great goddess, followed by a relaxed sigh and release. She is the holder of all of our sorrows and all of our joys. The miraculous chalice is the womb of birth and the cauldron of rebirth, the chalice of healing, the container holding the germinating seed. She is the body, the soul shrine that holds the spirit and keeps it from being lost or dissipated in a formless fog. Mm. 
she is pattern and form in the abstract and she in the specific within her we take form grow achieve fulfillment and let go of that form to move on to the next phase of her being so both talk about next form next phase i mean but also yes next for next form that's what i'm saying here that's what is being released through the world that has opened up through the space that has hold, that has been opened where the dead may pass on through so we are letting go of our forms right now so that they can move on so that they can transform into the next phase of our being that's what is taking place here i highly resonate with this all of the universe each individual particle every being is cherished by her she may indicate a form of pregnancy a necessary time of nurturing and development we need to be open to her overflowing grace she may also indicate a need to allow her nurturing grace to flow through us to others in the form of unconditional love and giving of sp and spiritual healing she tells us of the need for unconditional receiving and making the best of what we are offered she also reminds us that unbounded love and grace is ours, just waiting to be accepted. The presence of this card in a reading radiates comfort and nurturing to the cards around it. I feel like I really needed this reading for me because this is what I'm going through. And I really needed to understand the energy. Um, I'm going to leave this here. I had this deck out as well. I don't know if I want to pull a card right now. I feel like I just need to take a moment because this is what I'm going through. And I know, again, like I'm not the only one that is going through this. And that's why I like to share and be open. Um... It's interesting because I actually wrote, a, I'll show you, I won't show you my letter letter, but um, I wrote, I wrote a letter this morning to the sun and the moon and I'm not going to show you what I wrote because it's very personal to me, but I said, dear sun and moon. And then at the bottom of it, I said, um, thank you, sun and moon, with love, Reem. And I said my last name. And I said the daughter of my parents' name because they are also the sun and moon in my life. Um, I feel like this is what's taking place, the solar eclipse, but this is also an energy that we have been feeling for quite some time. I feel like that solar eclipse is just opening that world that we read with himself. I hope this reading provided you with insight as to what is taking place for you, this solar eclipse. Um, maybe even provided you with a little comfort and power. I feel like this energy is going to be here for quite some time. I don't know when it's going to end, but I feel like this energy will be here perhaps maybe for the next six months. Because the transfer, the resurrection and the transformation of new form, the next phase of our being is, this is what's taking place right now. I love you guys so much. I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to... I'm going to hide. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of healing work right now um, and just be with myself, be with himself and herself. 
and my friends, my past selves and my inner child, and the sound of the universe. I love you guys, and I will see you soon.